All right, hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about a company that is known to be very environmentally friendly and also makes really awesome clothes. The company's name is called Patagonia. Patagonia was founded by Yvonne Chouinard, and I'm pretty sure I butchered the pronunciation, in 1957. The company actually started when uh, Yvonne actually lost or actually left his hiking equipment at home when he went hiking. At the time, the company was actually under a different name called Chouinard Equipment, and it was just run by Yvonne himself. And until 1965, Yvonne worked alone until he met Tom Frost, who eventually became his business partner. Finally, in 1973, Tom and Yvonne opened their first store called Great Pacific Ironworks, and it was sometime during this time period that Yvonne changed the name to Patagonia. On February 7, 2014, Rose Macario, I don't know how to pronounce that, was chosen as the new CEO and remains CEO to this day. Patagonia, unfortunately, is not a public company. In fact, it is a private company, so good luck investing in the company. The company has some pretty epic ethics. Um, they believe that you should minimize your impact on the environment to every extent. About 65% of the materials they use in their clothes are made from recycled materials, and all of their product or all of the cotton used in their products have been certified by the Global Organic Textile Standards, or GOTS. And Patagonia even goes as far to tell their customers not to buy an extensive amount of their products because they believe that you should not be wasting their products. They also pay pretty well according to goodonuse.ecode. Patagonia also has many programs for its employees that allow their employees to express their beliefs. Patagonia's social responsibility is basically to keep the public informed about how we should reduce our impact on the environment from using recycled materials in your clothes to buying less clothes so you don't waste anything. And on their website, they also have something called Act uh, uh, action works which allows for people of the public to help out in environmental activism and Patagonia's marketing and business strategy is really just to appeal to the public through the kind of um, I believe it is pathos which is appealing to a person's feelings and if I got that wrong I'll just edit it in um, basically that is when they market the person or they market towards the person by telling them you know we are a very environmentally friendly company and that is really something that is beneficial not only to just Patagonia but also the environment as well the whole focus of the uh, company is to reduce our footprint as much as possible by making clothes out of recycled materials and they are also well they're basically a well-known brand with a friendly reputation for its employees and its customers patagonia runs under a centralized flattened organizational structure with the top dog being ceo rose marcario they have a marketing director digital creative director and even a director for environmental strategy patagonia is known for having a flat structured organization other than a pyramid or triangle this means communication can come from all the way at the top by Ivan Chouinard himself or Rose Marcario to someone in an entry-level role. The company likes breaking the rules for traditional hierarchies because many great ideas don't come from the manager, but they come from the hands-on worker on the ground floor getting their hands dirty in the project. The goal of the leaders is to pick the right team for the task. Less micromanaging and more deciding on who is right for a particular job and then let them handle the micro decisions. Then their biggest job is to get out of the way. Their philosophy on a manager is that they are more of a mentor and a resource that can, that can give you coaching and direction. As long as you get your work done, there's a lot of flexibility in scheduling work when an employee has more freedom to make their own decisions and pursue objectives. Being a private company helps the strength of their culture in Patagonia to preserve the strive to make a bigger impact not always including growth. This kind of structure has been very effective for the company. Patagonia has even stopped itself from growing at a certain point, so that not to lose their original vision of what the company is supposed to be about. In corporate, their turnover rate is from 4 to 4.5%, and 95% of mothers on maternity leave has returned to the company afterwards. Patagonia has structured its workers to be confidently independent in their jobs, accountable and free. By doing so, Patagonia has created a strong foundation that can, continues year after year to represent their core value. Patagonia management consists of CEO Rose Marcario, COO Doug Freeman, VP Global Marketing Corey Bayers, VP Global Sales John Collins, VP Product Innovation Glenn Morden, and VP Social and Environmental Responsibility Kara Chacon.
In regards to management of the company, CEO Rosie Barcarcio says, Part of what our management team and I did was take a company that's been around for 41 years and build the infrastructure and systems and processes and get the people in place to really scale the business in a responsible way. To do it in a way that we feel is aligned with our values, which includes having still pretty limited distribution, creating the best product, and continue to make innovations in the supply chain. Patagonia doesn't usually advertise in the Wall Street Journal, attend job fairs, or hire corporate headhunters to find new employees. It finds like-minded individuals who align with Patagonia's core values through an informal network of friends, colleagues, and business associates. Patagonia also doesn't look for stars seeking special treatment and perks. Its best efforts are collaborative, and the Patagonia culture rewards the team player while it does not tolerate those who need the limelight. Patagonia's Vice President of Human Resources, Dean Carter, also says, in regards to decision making, Picky Mountains is a major conversation at the board level, really sweating the details around the why and how this aligns with the company's mission and purpose. The micro decisions are left to lower players and teams. So once the board has identified the mountain, we align the company around what points on the mountain we want to reach within particular time frames. Then we release the organization to do what they need to do to make it happen. Since Patagonia's goal is to encourage people to work with their full selves, unlike regular companies, their work schedule is very flexible as long as you get the work done. They let their employees to have their personal times and not miss out on important events or simply just enjoy life that they want. They want to hire people who love environment and they think it doesn't make sense for them to have a work schedule that not allow them to enjoy outdoor events. Some example will be they pay for two months environmental internship, a lot of flex time for most position. They don't use annual performance rating. They don't schedule the meetings at lunch. They also have integrated child care and paid paternity leave. Back to the question, how do they motivate their employees? Beside all the benefits they offer, the show of caring and support about each of their employees' mood and personal life kept the turnover away as low as possible. It's still a business, but they want their employees to love their jobs, be passionate, and give the most of what they can give. Patagonia is not currently very diverse, but is making steps to increase diversity and prepare for the future. When you look at pictures of the Patagonia staff, you can observe their staff are for the most part white, although occasionally you will see different races. Patagonia has been making steps towards being more diverse, and they created an internship program which helps African Americans apply for internships in their company. They have hired many African American interns and, pro and the program receives more applications each year, which is a good sign that Patagonia will continue to become more diverse in the near future. Patagonia also explained that part of the reason diversity hasn't grown rapidly in the company is that there is a lack of positions to be filled. As the company grows, we can also expect to see racial diversity grow. Although they aren't racially diverse, when it comes to gender, they are very diverse. Their CEO, Rose Marcario, has showed great interest in introducing and retaining female employees in the company. She has been able to have a 100% return rate of working mothers who have taken maternity leave and then came back after giving birth. She has been very vocal about wanting to have child care centers for Patagonia employees or paying for their child care services when the company cannot provide it. This gives mothers good motivation for work for the company and shows females that Patagonia truly values and cares for them and is interested in keeping equality and making it clear that that is an important thing to them. In turn, they only have a 4% turnover rate, which is amazing. Most companies nowadays have a lot higher. Although they aren't racially diverse, they have a great CEO who is all for equal opportunity and equality, and that has led to a great company that is very successful. Patagonia is a brand that is enjoyed by people across the globe. According to their website, they have a total of 53 stores that span around the world. 26 of their stores are located in the United States, including their first storefront that was opened in Ventura, California in 1973. 
They have 16 stores located in Japan and also have business offices located there. Five Patagonia stores are spread around Europe, two in Australia, two in Chile, one in Argentina, and one in Canada. They have planned to continue sp expanding forward and opening up more stores. For the countries without stores, eight have their own website that they can buy from. If you are outside of those countries, there is a long list of nations that can purchase directly from Patagonia website and have it shipped to them in their home country. By spreading to be global, they will be able to continue growing as a worldwide brand and reach markets that they may have missed if they stayed national. There has been some concern about the ability to stay environmentally friendly while still growing, but Patagonia has showed that their priorities are not profits. They seem to be a lot more interested in being sustainable and helping the planet. The company's net worth is approximately $1 billion. Patagonia uses its technology and social media to educate viewers and consumers on a variety of environmental issues. Patagonia uses YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Google, Pinterest, Instagram, Tumblr, Vimeo, and etc. to reach out. A company called Engagement Labs uses a scale to rate how companies are doing on social media and they ended up being ranked top 10 performers while also having Asus in second and Jordan in fourth. Patagonia also has individual accounts for specific locations like Patagonia SF on Instagram. And on their Instagram, they use photos of nature and people having a good time sent by their own staff or consumers. And in the caption, it reminds their followers that there is something going on in the store, like a sale, so they remain interested. Patagonia really does a good job using its technology and social media in business and incorporating everything so it is easy to see what the company is really about. The company is working on being very diverse so there are no social justice issues. Since 1985, Patagonia has pledged 1% of sales to the preservation and restoration of the natural environment. In 2002, the founder of Patagonia Craig Matthews and the owner of Blue Ribbon Flies created a non-profit cooperation to encourage other businesses to do the same. The money is used on actions such as taking down dams, restoring forests and rivers, finding solutions to mitigate climate change, protecting critical land and marine habitat, and supporting local, organic, and sustainable agriculture. $175 million has been donated to non-profit companies and environmental groups since 2002. They give modest grants which typically range from 2500 to 15000 to hundreds of groups every year. Here are some of their biggest accomplishments. On Black Friday in 2016, Patagonia donated 100% of sales to grassroots organizations working to create positive change for the planet in their backyard. 39.8 million pounds of carbon dioxide emissions averted by investing in residential rooftop solar panels in Hawaii and mainland USA throughout the Tin Shed Ventures. And 855,000 single driver car trip miles were avoided through our Drive Less program. Overall, Patagonia is a very eco-friendly company that is trying to make a big difference in the world.